Um, so I'm going to talk about um, what we call low power, low cost and uh, smart cameras. And very briefly, uh, my background is more on wireless sensor networks, surveillance applications, um, distributed cameras. So how to schedule notes uh, regarding the event that you want to, to monitor could be based on criticality uh, scheduling. Uh, Multi-hub routing, uh, when it was uh, still um, a hot to research topic. Right now it's more uh, single hub um, transmission using long range radios. And in, in general, how to, to, to handle and transmit multimedia traffic on resource constrained devices. And then we move to Internet of Things, radio technologies, channel access control, and we are doing lots of test bed and performance evaluation of uh, wireless networks. So uh, what we mean by, by low power IoT smart cameras, um, behind the terms smart cameras, uh, we can easily imagine a camera with, uh, let's say, some kind of intelligence, embedded intelligence, so uh, image analysis. When we talk about low power IoT, it means that the whole the whole systems, which should be small, uh, fully autonomous, running on, on battery, and, and the autonomy should be of several years, uh, even if it's run on, on, on battery. So this is what we mean by low power IoT smart cameras. So it means that the the, the microcontroller that we are going to use are, are, are somehow uh, less powerful than the traditional microprocessors that, that we may uh, be using uh, for smart cameras. So they are mostly uh, ARM based, so ARM architectures, uh, Cortex M0, M3, M4 or M7, which are quite low power, but has uh, quite high efficiency uh, regarding the, the computation power and the power consumption. So um, most of this most of this board has more than 32 megabytes of, of RAM with enough flash to, to store uh, a lot of, of program. EEPROM, you do have analog digital pins. Uh, lots of bus, serial, I2C, SPI, and you usually program this board using C or C++. So some of you may be, uh, uh, may be um, familiar with Arduino environment. So a lot of this board, uh, since Arduino is somehow the, the de facto standard, uh, can be Arduino compatible. And uh, some of these board also can, can be programmed with using MicroPython or Circuit Python. So that opens uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, let's say, perspectives for complex processing, such as machine learning, deep learning, as we will be uh, able to see uh, later on the, in the presentation. So here are some of the, uh, what we call the more powerful microcontroller board. So you have the uh, M0 here, Adafruit M0, so based on the ARM Cortex M0. You have the TNC boards, uh, the TNC 3.2, 3.6, which are based on the ARM Cortex M4. Uh, the, the, the latest TNC uh, are based on the ARM Cortex M7. Uh, you have the very new uh, Raspberry Pico RP2040, which is based on the M0 Plus. Uh, it is not as powerful as the TNC, even if it's uh, it is more more recent. But they they, they choose to to have uh, somehow a trade off between the uh, computing power and the um, and the um, power cons power consumptions. And actually, you have a lot of of, of these new boards. Uh, the size is, is quite small, so it's a very compact size. Uh, I, I should have put like a one euro coin uh, on, on my slide here just to show you the, 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 the real size of, of, of the board. But if, if you crawl on the internet and, and then you, you search for this kind of board, you will be able to, to see the real size and, 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 they are, and, and they are pretty small. And uh, there's a lot more of them. Uh, I didn't show them all, but the, there are boards from STM. There are, uh, of course, ESP32. There's a lot of boards out there and there will be a lot of, of them in the future as well. So uh, I'm not talking about Raspberry Pi because uh, I know that in, in, in the various presentation, Raspberry Pi is, uh, some, is a platform that uh, a lot of you have, have, have been uh, testing or, or has been using or playing with. Uh, 
When we're talking about IoT smart cameras, I mean, still the Raspberry, even the Raspberry uh, Zero, uh, is, is consuming too much uh, for, for our uh, purposes. Uh, try to run a Raspberry on battery uh, and see how long it, it, it can run. Uh, what, when, I, when I said battery, I mean the regular AA battery that you can find everywhere. So uh, tr try to run it on, let's say, four or six AA battery and it's probably going to, to, to be able to run for, for one or two days uh, at most. Okay, so here we're talking about uh, several years autonomy uh, with regular AA batteries. So uh, definitely the Raspberry Pi is, is, does not belong to, the, to the, what, I, what I call the IoT devices. It's more like an edge devices or IoT versatile gateway, uh, but no, not as the uh, IoT devices uh, itself. So here we're, we're more focusing on the really the low power. Um, so um, re very recently, since we know that um, there has been a lot of, um, lot of, I mean, improvement into uh, silicones, um, embedding AI becomes a reality now because there are, there are uh, AI accelerators that can be uh, embedded into uh, into uh, these micro micro controllers. One example, one recent example is, for instance, it can write a K210. And uh, it's a microcontroller where actually you can see beside the uh, the uh, two, um, the dual core 64-bit uh, uh, risk um, microcontroller here, you, you do have a KPU CNN accelerator that um, is here to uh, provide acceleration for all uh, CNN operations. And right now, it's one of the most powerful edge computing chips. Of course, this, this comes from Canon, the manufacturer. But uh, from, from what I see and, and what we have seen from, from, from the, from the uh, let's say, from the news, uh, the, the, the step taken by Canon is, is really one of the first steps to, to really embed um, AI uh, accelerator into very compact form uh, micro, microcontroller. And there are some nice products that uh, you may find interesting. Uh, Raf Raphael show one of these. This is a Cypid uh, Max Bit, and you, you do have the version with an, uh, with the uh, with a camera here, and 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 you then you you do have a, a bigger board, probably more for more prototyping of proof of proof of concept. But if you take this version, as you can see, it's very small format. You do have the camera here. You, you have lots of memory and you do have the Kendry 210 uh, in order to, to test some CNN, um, CNN processing on your, on your IoT devices. Um, of course, um, when, when, when we're looking at uh, all this improvement, it has a cost on, on, on uh, processing uh, on, on the power consumption. Um, so if we if we want to achieve, I mean, we haven't tested uh, these new boards, but uh, I, I'm not sure that we can achieve uh, easily like two or three years autonomy running on battery if we are uh, processing a lot of images. So uh, we probably need a lot of more testing in order to assess on the uh, performance or the autonomy of the whole node. But it's uh, it's much uh, more efficient from the power perspective than using a Raspberry with, uh, let's say, uh, a CNN accelerator like the Google Coral or the Intel Neural Stick uh, plugged into the uh, Raspberry. Uh, for sure, it's, it's something like a 10 times uh, less con power consuming than the traditional uh, single board computer used for image analysis. So um, there's still some issue and challenges because um, even if you do have this 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 out the state of the art low power powerful microcontroller boards available, um, this is still a very first step to what what we call an IoT smart camera. Because if you want to deploy this on a real world application, then you you have to you you have to uh, to, to answer some questions. One of the first question is the operating mode. Uh, how would be the image taken or the image analysis? Is it periodic? It is on demand. Uh, if it's periodic, what frequency? And, and, and this is uh, 
important, I mean, for some applications, because if you're doing surveillance applications, then maybe the, the frequency should be high. Uh, if it's just to take a picture and, and then to recognize a, uh, a plant, then maybe the, the frequency is not that, that critical. But if you want to be able to, uh, to monitor uh, leaves plant for for diseases or for for um, you may need to to have uh, to process images uh, maybe several times a day. So it really depends on on the uh, on the event that you want you to, to detect, and also depending on the event, then you have to worry about the detection quality. And uh, linked to the detection quality, uh, if all Processing can be realized cannot be realized uh, locally because of reliability issues, because you're not sure whether your algorithm will, will will detect all the events or all the cases you are interested in. Then you may have to uh, transmit the image for disambiguation purposes or more advanced image processing. And this we have seen this in in many surveillance applications that we were dealing with uh, previously. Uh, we cannot rely totally on, on the local processing to, to raise alarm. So we need some time to uh, send the image for, for, for disambiguation purposes. So um, if you go into transmission, then, then you have a whole bunch of new problems and, um, and um, some of them are quite, uh, are quite hard to, to solve. Um, robust encoding is one of them. Uh, meaning that if you transmit the image, then the image size is a critical issue. Uh, but uh, more than that, uh, you need uh, an, um, a scheme, an encoding scheme that would allow you to transmit uh, the images and to support a high packet loss rate. And I do have some 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 example uh, after this. And uh, to show uh, this um, this purpose, but uh, to continue with the transmission, uh, usually when you want to transmit using the uh, let's say the state of the art long range radios, uh, then uh, they very technically I don't want to, to go into the detail, but sharing the transmission the transmission medium the wireless channel is very challenging with the new uh, the new low power long range networks it's not as easy like wi-fi or bluetooth or 3g 4g or 5g it's uh, it's it's completely uh, it's more challenging because actually uh, the main problem uh, that that creates uh, that creates all these uh, let's say difficulties is that it's very difficult to to know when somebody is transmitting because a lot of these long range radios, you can receive the signal below the noise floor. So if you can decode the signal below the noise floor, when you want to see whether someone is transmitting, then you cannot detect it. So it's very similar to the hidden terminal problem, but, uh, so, but it's, uh, it's more difficult to solve. But anyway, um, this this uh, low power long range radio. Some of you may 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 have uh, heard of them. Uh, there are radio technologies such as Sigfox or LoRa that provide ranges from five to thirty kilometers. And uh, low power because you can when you transmit, uh, you you usually uh, consume about forty milliamps to let's say uh, eighty milliamps at the at the maximum, and and you can achieve ranges that are far longer than traditional three G four G systems, and uh, especially uh, at a very uh, lower power consumption. Just to make uh, just to give you an idea. Uh, if I consuming 40 milliamps here with uh, these uh, low power long range radios, if I'm using 3G, I will I will consume 1,000 milliamps. If I'm using 4G, I will consume more than 1,500 milliamps. So uh, you can see the ratio in in, in power in, in power power consumption. Even even Wi-Fi uh, consume more more than 40 milliamps. Wi-Fi usually consume. Uh, 100 to, to 200 milliamps. Um, the, the price to pay is, of course, the, the, the very low throughput uh, using these, these long-range radios. Uh, the, the throughput using uh, long-range technology, LoRa, for instance, the maximum throughput would be like a 30, um, 37,500 bit per second. So be, be careful, I'm not talking about kilobit per second or megabit per second. Uh, it's really bit per second. So uh, 
37.5 kilobit per second. So uh, the ratio with, let's say, a medium, uh, like a 3G, uh, 3G uh, connection at running at, at 20 megabit per second, then you will have a ratio of, of about one, 100,000 less uh, throughput. Okay, so uh, sending images with, with this kind of radio is, is, very, is very challenging. Uh, so how slow is it? Um, depending on the, let's say, the some modulation parameters, I, I don't want to get into the detail, but if you want to achieve the longest, the longest range, so 10 kilometers or 20 kilometers, then you need to, to, to have the, the highest uh, spreading factors. And, and, uh, and then you can see that uh, to send 255 bytes, you need almost 10 seconds, okay, so 10 seconds. I'm not talking about millisecond or microsecond. Um, of course, uh, it's possible to, to, to decrease if you, if you believe that uh, sensibility at the receiver can, can, be, uh, can be tractable, if you want to achieve like a three, three, four, five kilometers range, and if the environment is not, there's not many obstacles, then you can decrease a little bit the, 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 you can increase a little bit the bandwidth used for, for your signal. And then you can have something like a two second or one second or something like this, or between two second and, and, and four second and, and so on, okay? But still, uh, if you compare to traditional uh, radio technologies that, that uh, you may uh, that you may know, such as Wi-Fi, it has nothing to, to compare with uh, this kind of uh, radio technologies. Um, one of the problem is um, when you're using this, this, this kind of uh, transmission, because uh, because for for power uh, consumption you you won't be able to use 3G or 4G, and because of law of range you won't be able to use Wi-Fi. Uh, then you have to worry uh, for uh, on the uh, let's say the frequency or the um, uh, the radio regulation. A lot of these uh, radios work in, in what we call the unlicensed subjugate uh, band. And in order to, uh, to have like a fair policy access for everybody, then you have uh, regulation and you have limitation of the radio time. So usually you, you do have something like a one person duty cycle. So meaning that on one hour, you only have one person of radio time. So it, it, it would mean that uh, you have to do everything you need uh, in with 36 seconds, okay? So every one hour you have like 36 seconds to, to, to transmit something. Uh, if we're talking about uh, traditional IoT data, just to send a temperature or something uh, very simple, then it's, 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 it's not really a limitation. But when we're talking about images, then uh, that takes much more, much more, uh, much more amount of, of data, and then 36 uh, seconds. Even I mean, especially with the long range technologies, uh, are, are a very hard constraint. Um, regarding the the image encoding, uh, of course, you because of the image size uh, constraint and issues for transmission, then you you need adaptive image encoding. So adaptive image encoding is is not something new. So uh, you can do that in in G in let's say traditional JPEG. So uh, it's is not is not very difficult to achieve. So here is, is an example with with a custom a custom uh, encoding uh, images where where the raw image is is here. It's a 120 128 by 128 pixel images, and then we decrease the, the, the quality factor, so 119 down to five here. Okay, what is more interesting is the uh, the robustness against uh, packet losses. Uh, here is an example of a traditional JPEG format, so the one that you're usually using with uh, uh, with uh, cameras, even with the Raspberry cameras, who are uh, providing you a JPEG stream. Uh, the problem is if if you try to take a, a JPEG and then you randomly remove uh, some packets, then you have a high chance, a high probability that you won't be able to decode your image at all. 
Okay, so uh, here we, we we did some tests with a loss rate of twenty percent. Uh, the first test here is no no burst, so no no losses in burst, meaning that it's really random. Uh, so maybe you you're losing one packet at a time at a time. Uh, so nine image out of twelve could not be decoded at all. Okay, and see what we got from the other Im two I images. And we, if we do have a radio uh, burst, meaning that you can you, you can lose two, three, four packets um, in a row, then things are, are, are somehow getting worse. Okay, so what is very important when when you're dealing with IoT smart cameras is you have an encoding scheme where. Uh, you really have to be tolerant to, to packet losses. So um, here is a, a work that we, we, we did with um, our colleagues, uh, Vincent Lequeer from, from Cron uh, Laboratory in, in Nancy. And um, as you can see, if we have 10% packet loss, uh, we, we still have, uh, we still can decode, uh, uh, I mean, actually we can decode even with 90-95% uh, of, of packet losses, but of course at some time you won't see anything uh, at, at all. But here you have 10% packet loss, 20%, 30%, 40%, 50 and then 60 And beginning at, at let's say 40 or 50%, then it's difficult, it's hard to, to see, I mean, it's hard to recognize the images. But from, from 10 to 30% of packet losses, we we can still uh, get something. And maybe there can be some uh, image reconstruction, like the uh, technique that um, Raphael presented so far, I mean, pre previously, that can enhance the image. So really, th this is very high, high topic, because uh, you need to be to, to be able to support a very high packet loss ratio. And also, uh, any reception order in order to be able to decode your 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 packet stream, uh, even if you you're losing a lot of packets. Uh, so these are uh, some pictures of our early development platform. So early, so we started working on, on this uh, starting in 2012. So we we went into several phases using, uh, I mean, um, Arduino. So simple Arduino with very sm uh, small amount of memory. So we had an SD card here to store uh, intermediate uh, data. Then we moved to uh, more more more. Powerful uh, architectures, still Arduino way with more uh, more memory to be able to store one or two images, and also to be able to encode the images. Uh, we also have a like a multi-camera system for a free camera system here. So remember that we were working on surveillance applications, so we were interested in increasing the the, the coverage. So here is, you have only one camera, and here we have uh, three cameras, and here we still have three cameras, but we replace the angle of view by by larger angle cameras. So as you can see, we can we can cover with the same amount of image sensors uh, a larger area. So th these are the early work that that we did when we were working on surveillance application. Right now, the current platform that we are using for our test. Uh, is based on the TNC with uh, LoRa radio, the uh, um, uh, camera here. I mean, we take the MuCam 2 camera because what is important uh, for, for, for us is to have a camera that provide a raw stream. Uh, a lot of these camera provide a JPEG. And if you do have JPEG, uh, it's hard to, to, to re-encode the JPEG uh, according to what you want. So we prefer to have a camera that provides the raw stream directly. So the MuCam 2 or MuCam 3 cameras uh, do have these uh, features. Uh, of course, there's a lot of new cameras, but beware if you if you want to to to, to encode or to use your own encoding scheme. Uh, as I said, a lot of these cameras only provide JPEG stream and do not have the features of providing the raw stream. Um, so uh, what we what we had um, uh, what we tested is, for instance, if we if we encode the the image down with a ratio down to eighteen, uh, we, we can have four packets and four packets uh, with a maximum size. So if we take the the highest uh, spreading factors or the highest range, we may exceed 
the 36 seconds. And something in between, then uh, we do have probably time to send two or three images every hour. So that, depending on the application, of course, uh, that, that can be tractable. Uh, regarding the encoding uh, performances, of course, um, the figures are, are, are very uh, specific to the TNC microcontroller. The TNC, uh, we, we, it's, it's uh, like, um, it's a microcontroller where you can adjust the speed. So we test this with 24 MHz, 48 MHz, 72 and, and 96 MHz for the microcontroller. The encoding time is actually not that much. Uh, as you can see, the encoding time for, for 128 by 128 pixel is, is uh, more or less 200, 300 milliseconds. Uh, of course, this is the, the case where we are running it a very low, low, low frequency. You can get up to 600 milliseconds, but, but for the regular one, probably 300 milliseconds. Uh, what's taking time is the time to get the data from the cameras. Uh, so it takes more than one second. So uh, roughly in total, capturing an image and coding it would take 2.3 seconds. And if you need to transmit it, after the, uh, if you believe that you need to transmit it because um, the local processing uh, is not uh, reliable enough, then you will need the, the, the time for, for the image transmission. Um, regarding the, uh, the energy consumption, uh, usually, uh, I mean, it's, uh, I, I'm not going to comment this, uh, this table because uh, I don't have time. Uh, but the encoding in millijoule is here. Uh, what is interesting is at, uh, at, the, at the end, if we assume uh, taking one image every hour and then we encode the image uh, with a quality factor of 10 and then we transmit four packets, then theoretically or roughly we can, we, we can achieve like uh, a little bit less than, than one year of uh, autonomy uh, running on four AA battery. So we are still a little bit... Uh, quite far from, let's say, two or three years of, of autonomy. Uh, so in order to achieve this, then of course you, you have to, to send less images per day. So one image per hour means 24 images per day. Uh, maybe you can, you, you can uh, reduce this to one, one, one image every six hours, then you will be able to increase the, the autonomy of your node. So um, that, that concludes my talk. Um, I, I wanted to give you some, some uh, information about uh, what we call IoT smart cameras. And uh, I mean, the, the recent hardware platform uh, are really a tremendous opportunity to, to develop IoT smart camera. Uh, we are not really limited by the hardware platform anymore. We have a lot of uh, nice microcontroller and most of them cost less than 10 euros. So for, for plant phenotyping, it probably provide, uh, um, provide a lot of opportunity, lots of perspective than the traditional sensors. And uh, we discussed some, some months ago with David about the usage of low-cost hyperspectral cameras. So it's still something that we want to be able to test I and mean, connect a low-cost hyperspectral uh, camera to, the, uh, to our IoT platform. So maybe David, we can, we can try to uh, to work on this, and uh, just I wanted to conclude by by the main messages I, I wanted to 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 give is that if we want to to have real world deployment, then there's still a lot of issues and challenges on the uh, image uh, encoding, compression, power consumption, transmission performance, and so on. So we still have some some some. I mean, we're still far from from having. A really autonomous uh, IoT smart camera capable of running autonomously with AI processing for several years. Uh, we are quite close to it, but uh, still there's a lot of challenges. So thank you for your attention. <laughs>